I've been uh, involved in the industry for almost 40 years now. Um, I uh, started as a uh, uh, in pre actually I started as a photographer, commercial photographer, which migrated into prepress uh, a few years later. Um, just because I, I was told I could make more money in prepress than I could as a photographer, and this was back in the early 70s, and I said, sure, what the hell, you know. Well, at the time it was, yeah. <laughs> uh, who knows, I could have been, you know, Richard Avedon or something, right? <laughs> but no, I, I um, uh, and then I started a printing company, um, and then I uh, sold that printing company, and I started a, uh, a pre-press company, a digital pre-press company, a lot of Cytex equipment, um, um, and, and then migrated from there, because it was at the time where we were just starting to get in what they used to call desktop publishing, basically, uh, which really meant we were using um, desktop computers to do the work that we used to do with mini computers and mainframes. Um, and uh, did that for uh, a number of years, did some software development, uh, developed a product called TrueMatch, which actually was a color specifying system that wound up in a number of different applications, um, and, um, and did some consulting. And at one point we determined that uh, it was time to, uh, because margins started to go down, I said, you know what, this is not where I want to spend my time. So we, uh, we sold off the pieces of the business. We uh, uh, sold the, the pre-press company to another uh, company, uh, the software company, uh, development company, we sold off. And I basically did the, um, uh, the consulting and I took that with me. Yeah, well, yeah, and I've been consulting since the uh, full time since uh, the early '90s, um, and I consult with uh, pretty much the whole vertical market of uh, print and publishing and technology. Um, but it was interesting because when it started, when I got involved in digital, that's really where I understood the importance of workflows and how do you make the most out of this digital technology. Do you just use it to do manual processes or do you use it to its fullest and actually you know, kind of leverage it uh, to get things better? I think digital workflows or workflows in general um, are very misunderstood. It's a misunderstood topic. Um, it's a very confusing topic for print service providers. Um, it's confusing for a lot of reasons. First of all, um, it has become a marketing term rather than a process term. So people don't necessarily, when they think of workflow, they say, oh, well this is the box that's controlling my printer, so that must be my workflow. Well, it, you know, an extension of that would be, well that means I have all these different printing machines, and each one of them has a box in front of it, so I have a lot of different workflows. And well, you, in, in essence, I guess you do, but that's not very efficient. I, you know, one of the things I, I, uh, I, I try to do um, when I work with clients on workflows is get them to understand first and foremost the DFE is not the workflow. The workflow feeds the DFE, um, but if you look at a workflow, it's really the, the, the point of connection between all of those different processes and how you can leverage uh, kind of the, the, the unity of it rather than the individuality of it. And I think that that's really what workflow is and that's how I look at it. Now, because I don't, I'm not really selling product, it's hard for me other than to sit down with somebody and, and, and usually when I do that and I, and I you know, draw up a couple little sketches, they get it. I like those companies that, that have these workflows that sell the, the, that sell the different equipment out there. Um, but most of the workflows that they have developed and try to implement are what I call engine forward workflows. So basically they're workflows that support the product that they're selling and that's why they're doing it. They're not making a lot of money on the workflows, on the software, as a matter of fact they find it difficult in many cases to, to justify it. Um, they can make money on the professional services for sure. The people who are more agnostic about workflow, so in other words they don't have a piece of hardware to sell, okay. They have a they have a workflow to sell. They have a way to connect all those pieces I talked about before, the disparate pieces together. Um, they don't come with any other baggage. They don't have to sell hardware. So they're actually able to look at it in a, again, in a much more holistic way. Um, and I think that um, 
those are the kinds of people who are probably in a better position. Now, that doesn't mean that the, that the hardware companies uh, can't sell workflow or don't sell workflows, and they do, and I've been to many plants where they do that. Usually, though, what I find is when they do that, the automation that's there are islands of automation. But how does that integrate into what they already have, or do we just mean it's another silo? First of all, they don't necessarily have the time to even th think about it. Yeah. Uh, they don't necessarily have, in, in many cases they do have the skills, but for, for sure very rarely have the time. Uh, it's usually one of those things that becomes a, a kind of a, 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 what we call a stepchild, right? Um, you know, um, we know he's there, but uh, he's over there. Everybody loves hardware. It's fun to go shop for hardware because it's, it, it's got that new car smell, you know? And it, lots of lights and buttons, it's very cool. The software is really what is the value add on top of the hardware. That's what actually allows you to get the efficiency that, that many of the hardware manufacturers tell you you can get. The only way you're gonna get that is if you've got a good workflow. Um, otherwise, you're gonna find yourself um, kind of hamstrung. You're just not gonna get, achieve that level of efficiency that you otherwise could if you had stepped back and developed a, uh, a workflow to support your entire organization, kind of, as I said, more holistically. Every print service provider um, needs to step back and look at their workflows. They need to, and they need to develop a workflow that's not for today, but that's for tomorrow, that also will support today, so that as time goes on and as new equipment comes out uh, and they try to buy it, and, and they, it's, a, it's a, an open enough uh, workflow where they can actually plug into it without a, a lot of effort. Um, or, on top of that, not just the, um, uh, the, um, the ability to plug into it, but Many printers are, are starting to move into other vertical areas. So, you know, they were commercial printers and now they're doing signage. Or they were um, uh, transactional printers and now they're doing direct mail. Um, and you start to look at all these other types of things and you want to make sure that if you decide to go in another direction, that the kind of workflow that you implement will be something that will allow you to, support, to build and support as you grow. First and foremost, yes, definitely talk to your vendors. See what they have to say. But understand that, um, evaluate what they say. Don't just automatically assume that what they're telling you is exactly what you need or what you want. Um, so talk to a number of different vendors. Um, talk to other service providers, ones that you know have already gone through some of that. Because it's not, it's, it's not hidden. You get together with a bunch of, 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 of other service providers, you start discussing things, um, and you can see that, oh, you're doing that? How did you do that? How did you go about it? Did someone help you? How did they help you? You have to just open up the dialogue. First of all, I think the inherent nature of the printing business is, and it's no different today than it was 40 years ago, that as a print service provider, uh, there is a belief that somehow the reason you're successful is you have the magic sauce. You're the one who knows the best way to get it done and that's why you do what you're doing. And of course you talk to all the printers and they all feel the same way about it so they're not as open to sharing. Um, there have been over the years a number of different um, um, attempts to uh, bring users together to share. Users groups, various users groups, uh, back in the day SciTex user group was a great group for sharing. Um, some of the, what, what are now what we're calling hosted events with the, from manufacturers, whether it be something like DScoop, which is really a user's group but has turned more into a, uh, it's, it's, a it's a convention, conference, hardware, whatever show. Um, yes, things like this, uh, where at uh, Graph Expo, uh, or Print I guess it's called this year, um, where at Print, um, they have conferences going on where people should be able, their presentations, people should be able to have discussion, but it's, um, this is, there's a distraction. You know, there's an 800 pound gorilla in the room, elephant in the room. You've got, the, you've got the, the show floor with all the shiny things and that's where people want to focus. And they go to the conferences just to sit down and relax usually. Yeah. 
Uh, free lunches, right? Yeah, exactly. Free lunch, and they can sit down and you know get the load off their feet. Um, but I think it goes beyond that. Back in when we uh, when we had Seabold, we uh, and this is going back to the to the 90s and uh, actually late 80s and 90s. Um, we we tried to focus on the the dialogue, and it wasn't just that. Uh, it wasn't about selling hardware. It wasn't about selling software. It was about communicating information and not just down, but actually interactively. Well, I think yes, but more importantly, not just between the vendors and the printers, uh, the discussion was also between the printers and each other, because that's where they're gonna learn. Um, yes, there are books and there you can read and there's lots of great articles. I mean, I write a lot of articles and I do videos and, and we try to use that as a way to help educate people because right now there's so much information out there nobody has the time to step back and just really digest it all or even find it all because there's so much of it out there there's no doubt that people don't have the band that's why i said before that you know you can have you may have skills internal skills because you need two things if you're going to kind of reinvent your workflow. You need skills and you need bandwidth. And some of them have the skills, but usually the people with the skills are the ones on the front line getting the work out. And they're the first ones people are gonna to go to. They're gonna say, okay, you know all about this. You develop the workflow. Well, but at the same time, I want you to get all the work out. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. What I've found over the years is the return on investment of software workflow software is much higher and faster than it is with hardware. Um, I've done extensive implementations of workflow software that with the payback in three months, four months, usually under a year in any case, how can you, what, what kind of hardware can you buy and get that kind of return? Yeah, absolutely. I think that look, if you don't have the you, if you don't have the internal skills, or you have the skills and don't have the bandwidth, then bring somebody and bring in some help, because even with that, you'll still get the good return. Um, uh, don't abdicate the ownership of whatever put, gets put in there, because ultimately you're going to have to live with it. So you need to make sure that you assign people to learn and help implement from your internal organization. Um, in order for it to be long-term successful. Uh, it's not like going to a class and they're gonna give you, a, they're gonna certify you on something and give you a certificate you can hang on the wall and all of a sudden you know everything there is and you're gonna be good at it. That's not how it works. It has to be part of the culture. It has to be something that not just one person engages in, but the entire organization engages in. And if you do that, then you'll be very successful with it. There's no doubt about it.